The only problem with landscape urbanism is its proponent's fondness for the obscure terminology of post-structuralism. For Anglo-Saxon philosophers, this vocabulary is painful and well satirised by the Ruderal Academy's bullshit generator. I prefer the Wikipedia explanation that landscape urbanism is a theory of urban planning arguing that the best way to organise cities is through the design of the city's landscape rather than the design of its buildings. The word landscape came into English in the 17th century as a painter's term, with the theory that artists should represent ideal scenery rather than everyday scenes. In the 18th century, landscape became a designer's term, and in the 19th century, it became a geologist's and then a geographer's term. As used in landscape urbanism, it tends to waver between these uses. The word urbanism comes, via French, from the title of a book published by a Catalan engineer in 1867. Idelfonso Cerda's General Theory of Urbanization explained the principles used for the expansion of Barcelona. It was an interdisciplinary and enlightened theory, but it was flawed. The grid was too monotonous. The pre-1859 landscape was obliterated, the rivers converted into drains. The design had no provision for landmark buildings or other focal points. The streets were all 20 metres wide and are now very noisy and very congested. Most of the green open spaces included in the original plan were not built. Sada's plan over-regulated some things, under-regulated other things and largely ignored the existing structures of the Catalan landscape. As related in a parable, The wise man built his house upon a rock, and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Then, when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, the wise man's house stood firm, and the foolish man's house was lost. This parable can be used to make two points about urban design. First, it is necessary to understand the landscapes on which cities are built. Second, different landscapes require different approaches to city building. In prehistoric Scotland, settlements were often built on stilts in lakes, completely disregarding the parable of the wise and foolish builders. One of modernism's great mistakes was the adoption of an international style. It resulted in far too similar cities being built in wildly different cultures and landscapes. The results were very, very dull. In landscape architecture, the modernist design method was survey analysis design, SAD. Ian McHarg developed this into a layer-based design method known as ecological design. It was rooted in science, and Ian McHarg wrote that any man assembling the same evidence would come to the same conclusion. As a design method, it was much too determinist. Postmodernism developed in architecture. It was a welcome change, though it gave us an anything-goes pluralism and an excess of diversity. City skylines became architectural junk shops inspired by big egos and random geometry. But two architects showed in their entries for the 1982 Parc de la Villette competition how postmodern concepts could work with landscape architecture. Their design was layer-based, but the layers were cultural rather than ecological. Landscape urbanism 
integrates the ecological layers used by McCarg with the cultural layers used for Parc de la Villette. I see this integration as post-postmodern. In place of an anything-goes pluralism, it can give us a diversity which is rooted in ecology, conservation, culture or faith. Many beliefs cannot be proved or disproved by science, but they are very important in design and in life and in landscape architecture.